guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another episode of Dr. Stone. We're now on to episode 10 of season two, which is called Humanity's Strongest Tag Team. So in the last episode, we have finally come to a truce between the two kingdoms. They have basically Senku managed to come up with some uh, very explosive material that forced Tsukasa into doing a negotiation because Tsukas or sorry, Senku did not want anyone to get hurt. And we already know that Tsukasa is not beyond that. But in the end, Senku found out that there is something that Tsukasa wants more than this war. And that is to revive his sister and hopefully get her to a point where she's healthy enough to live in this world. So I'm not exactly sure what this tag team will be, what tag team we need here. But uh, I guess we're going to do the group effort of trying to bring uh, Tsukasa's little sister back. I'm ready to jump into the episode. But just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be in the know of when I drop these episodes or anything else you might be watching of mine, you can go ahead, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification notification bell and then that way you will be in the know. All right, that out of the way guys, let's get into the episode right now. Yeah, I really I'm more terrified of Hyogo with his eyes open to be honest. Right? Like Mr. Primitive over there is all about the nudity. Y'all have seen this before. What? Oh, I forgot the villagers. I was like, is <laughs> there not be any of Tsukasa's people? <laughs> See, Tien is me. Let's hope so. See what a nice guy Senku is. Tsukasa doesn't deserve it. She's like, who is you? <laughs> right? Like, who is you? <laughs> Get off me. No wonder. A few thousand. Don't worry about it. Don't you relate to him. Sukasa will still take your block off. Oh! Get away from these weirdos. That looks weird. That is not her. She has pink hair. He deserved that, though. That's what you get for tying up Suika last season. So is this going to be like a sub-faction now? It's to blow everything up. Your village. Oh! He doesn't want anybody else to be woken up. Alright, well, I guess nobody else gets revived then. Ew! Is this what you have to breed with going forward? You know, you can. You just have to find another cave, bro. Exactly. She does not have a brain. Don't leave your sister! Actually, you know what? You deserve it. Never mind. That's what you get for thinking savages were gonna... Guess Brick Bro took the hit. Mm. I don't feel bad for you, Sukasa. This is what you get. You've been with the right winning team the whole time. <laughs> that little Senku, he can't hold that big boy up! No, let the Waku go. They need help. I think you underestimate your daughter. That's her future husband down there. Maybe. 
Really? You're seriously still cleaning your ears after being in all that water? Right? Thank you! I was about to say, I think you got divorced, but anyway. Yeah, but see, nobody survived, dummy. It absolutely can. And you are like 12 years old, you don't know what you're talking about. And not to mention the fact, what are you going to do when you get sick? Do you know how to make medicine? Do you know how to, have, you know, to bandage a wound? Do you know how to like splint things? Do you know how to deliver babies? Mm -hmm. uh, what? Shut up! God! Liked you better when you just sat there with your eyes closed. Bro, did you not hear? The reason this whole battle was happening is because he doesn't want to do this. That's why he didn't say yes to the knucklehead. He does. There's always a choice. Death is a choice. It's buying time. <laughs> Not him reviving birds. He did that with a chest wound. Because, you know, he's got honor. He's actually like a good guy. Y'all should have been on the same side in the first place, but anyway. Right, I mean, Senko's not exactly the fight hard kind of guy, he's the fight smart kind of guy. Not exhilarating again. Damn, he's giving you that much trouble when he's got a chest wound? I'd be embarrassed if I was you, Hyoga. My man jumps midair. How do you do with flames, fam? Use your spear on that. Show us. Not bad. I was saying, you could maybe get enough wind going. Round one. Oh, he already bandaged his finger? Damn, he's fast. Kohaku, where are you, girl? Keep talking. Keep keep talking, actually. I usually actually can't stand it, but you're buying time. I don't feel for Sukasa, though. He did wake this freak up. Electrocute that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly! He's crazy! He's smarter than you, dummy. <laughs> Always. Ooh! Please make him drool. Make him shake and drool, please. He's like, where are you going, Hyoga? Let go! <laughs> oh, I hope your heart stopped. Now beat his ass with the stick. I'm petty like that. I'm breaking every bone. Give him some time to think about it as he heals up. Wow, we gonna lose Sukasa? Well, that's what happens, bro. Live by the sword, you know? Not the high five. And that's how we end the episode. Well, well, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk that those two who've been at, at odds since the middle of last season would have to team up against Hyoga of all people? But like I said in the episode, I didn't have a lot of, uh, no sympathy for Tsukasa in this one, unfortunately. This is what happens when you play with fire. You know, you get in bed with some bad people, you gotta expect that sometimes that's gonna turn around and bite you in the butt. He didn't have to do all this. Sukasa went way too extra with all this, just reviving nothing but the absolute gutter snipe of society 
You can't expect gutter snipe to be loyal. The, the gutter snipe are gonna be what they are. They're gonna do gutter snipe things. They're gonna turn on you. He should have known. But anyways, and I mean, the fact that he was about to go for his little sister first, like this man has no morals, none at all. But then again, Sukasa was saying he's gonna take out all the old people. So now he understands what it's like. Oh, you see how it wasn't fun when someone was coming after someone you cared about? Oh, then all of a sudden it's a moral problem, but you were fine with taking out all the adults and, and, and Senku? I hope this is a moral lesson that settles into the primate brain of Sukasa after all of this, because this is what happens when you have that very narrow-minded, you know, viewpoint, you don't listen to people. But anyhow, I don't say that the kids should have died. I'm not saying that Sukasa should be taken out. And I don't know if he's going to survive this or not, but I'm just saying it's a lesson he needed to learn because he was hard-headed. We heard even last episode, he was like, I'm not even changing my mind. This is only going to be a truce, thank you. You'll see as soon as, you know, I get you, I, you know, I'm going to give you a little truce, but then I'm coming after you. Like he wasn't even going to change anything after it all. So I'm glad that he saw not only that his people could turn against him at any point and that, you know, there are people out there who really don't care about anything, but also when he recognized that he'd broken his promise to Senku that he would never be in danger again when Senku actually kept all the promises he made to him, even after knowing that he tried to take him out. So I'm like, I was wondering how long it was gonna take for Sukasa to realize that like Senku has always been direct and honest and trustworthy with him, even when he had no reason to be. So like, if there was anybody he can trust on this place, if there's anyone you wanna keep around, it's him. And he was right about the revival of fluid healing his sister as well. So anyways, hopefully from this point forward, Sukasa is going to, I understand if he doesn't wanna live the way that Senku lives, as I said in the last episode, but maybe now he'll actually just leave Senku and the kingdom of science alone. And then if he wants to go with the people who wanna live in the stone world, they can go someplace else and continue living the way that they wanna live. Like there's no reason they can't do that. Like that's the way the world works today, right? There's different nations, different groups that have different belief systems, different ways of living. You can sometimes work with them. You can create agreements where y'all just leave each other alone, that, but except maybe trade or, you know, do things that mutually benefit each other. But for the most part, you stay out of each other's business. There's no reason that can't happen here if that's what Sukasa wants. But I think hopefully, hopefully, don't know yet, maybe Sukasa is gonna realize after this that maybe just maybe he can coexist with the kingdom of science and things will be all right, right? Things, things will be okay. But anyways, we'll have to see what happens because we got very little of his sister, but she seems like she's sweet. And I have a feeling she's gonna wanna get to know the people who've survived this whole time as well. Like I can see her wanting to be more of a, a social person considering that she's been out of the game for a very, very long time. But yeah, other than that, we got a pretty interesting battle there. I really like that it showed when you have the brawn, even though it was injured brawn with the brains, it's an unstoppable duo. So even Hyoga, even though he's a very good fighter, as we saw, it wasn't enough for him. Like he cannot outthink Senku. He might be able to go toe to toe with with Sukasa as far as you know fighting. Although even he admitted that he had to get the opportunity to mortally wound him in order to actually go up against him. Uh, he realized that yeah he could not outthink Senku. Senku's brain power is above pretty much everybody that's alive at that point right now. So. Yeah, good to see a reminder of how, you know, the combination of strength and brains can be good. It's basically what Taiju and Senku were for the longest time, if if Taiju could fight as well as um, Sukasa could. So yeah, cute episode. And it's like, yeah, I've never really thought that those two would be teaming up in this, se in this particular season, but I'm glad to see it. Glad to know that that part of the battling is over. So yeah, very interested to see what our final episode is going to be about now that this resolu this whole... This whole thing has been resolved as far as the two nations and Hyoga, I'm assuming is going to be taken care of. I do wonder what's gonna leave, um, what's her name? The, the pink haired girl, cause that's his, uh, his number one. But I'm, I guess my guess is that if they do cast him out or send him on his way, then she's probably just gonna go with him. I gotta think, cause she doesn't seem to have any other friends or loyalties in that group. So yeah, anyways, another good episode. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.